गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टूडे अगेन वी आर हेयर टू डिस्कस ऑन द जी आई एस एंड फॉरेस्ट मैपिंग इन दॉपिक इन योर जियो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स फॉर इकोलॉजी एंड फॉरेस्ट्री सो लेट स्टार्ट विद हाउ जी आई एस इज यू नो यूजफुल फॉर फॉरेस्ट मैपिंग डिफरेंट टाइम्स ऑफ फॉरेस्ट मैपिंग सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द फॉरेस्ट मैपिंग what is now uh, uh, what is forest mapping now forests have an important and vital global ecological as well as the social economic resource and they require a sustainable management as we all know that uh, as in india many of the people who uh, rural people they are dependent for their sustainable livelihood for various kinds of forest activities so that's how the forest have an important and very uh, vital global ecological as well socio economic resource and they require definitely a sustainable management an attempt has been made in the research to monitor to record data as well as uh, to have a systematic understanding of forest uh, you know mapping forest map development and map the existing forest resources with their coverage in context to the cost effectiveness and time consumption so in the previous lecture if you remember we have tried to uh, you know give you a little bit uh, aspect about the remote sensing in gis how these uh, you know tools of geoinformatics they are being very helpful for the mapping and management in a Uh, term, terminology of cost effective and as far as their time uh, you know consumption in recording in collection is concerned so as they give us a synoptic view of uh, 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 you know various forest resources or other natural resources so that's how these gis and remote sensing related techniques they help us to monitor to record the data as well as to un, uh, you know uh, to conceptualize a systematic understanding of forest map development with the existing forest cover and the currently forest cover uh, related things in a very cost effective and uh, time uh, saving manner then the forest management it requires really a reliable inventory of data and the map indicating the current status of the uh, map area uh, forested areas okay so forest management how we can go for the different management activities in yesterday's lecture also we have discussed that if we have a you know a current scenario in a accurate manner uh, Uh, then we can uh, uh, go for different kinds of management strategies different plannings in those forest area so now these uh, maps did these uh, uh, reliable uh, inventories of forest resources which we are doing in a very systematic and more accurate manner with the help of gis is you know uh, 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 creating very important uh, role in the forest management activities as well as they are also helping the managers to uh, go for proper management strategies to be followed up then the problem involved in maintaining this uh, you know sustained supply of forest resources for the present day need and the future demands on the mankind have made the forest managers conscious about the compelling need of relational utilization of the resources so the problem where the problem is involving to maintain the you know uh, sustained supply of forest resources so with the help of these uh, you know uh, technologies geospatial tools we can easily go for the management of different kinds of uh, you know forest resources uh in terms of their uh you know 
um, present uh, you know status in terms of the um, historical data set we all uh, we we can put all the layers in a single platform and we can go for a change detection and we can uh, come out with the results that which are the areas which are having continuous degradation so they need to be focused and uh, uh, we can plan for their sustainable, um, you know, uh, management. Then the conventional methods of forest resource assessment and monitoring were time consuming as well as the cost was involved more because frequently they have to the, go to the fields, they have to, uh, uh, love, when we are going for fields, a lot of, uh, you know, manpower is also required so but whereas we if we are using these remote sensing and gis uh, data sets we uh, we need to uh, yes procure the data sets which are nowadays many uh, uh, you know open source uh, you can get the data sets also for the previous years yes and then we can go for a change detection and then ultimately we can quantify with the field samples new field samples and the other other survey techniques which is uh, as comparative to the you know previous things it is less time consuming as well as the cost effective also the advent of remote sensing and geographic information system and global positioning system technologies has revolutionized the forest resource assessment monitoring management has reduced the time and cost considerably okay so the advent or the uh, you know uh, uh, what do you call uh, the uh, use of these remote sensing and gis gps in totality we can say the geospatial technologies has revolutionized the forest resource assessment what is uh, the forest scenario right now monitoring of these forest resources management and yes of course reduce the time and cost uh, uh, you know considerably which we earlier was taking a lot of time for this service so that thing has been controlled by the uh, this geospatial technology as far as the survey part is concerned or as far as the assessment of these forests, mapping, monitoring, and management is considered. So everything is being controlled in terms of their time taking the thing and in terms of their uh, cost. Okay, so with the help of these GIS, we are able to go for uh, uh, forest mapping, which is uh, 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 quite uh, uh, you know uh, precise as well as uh, less time consuming and yes we need to go for some quantification techniques based on which we can also update if there are some errors we can also update then the evaluation of gis and global positioning system and remote sensing technologies has enabled the collection and analysis of field data in the that was not possible the arrival of computers gis has proven to play a vital role in following okay so the evolution of gis gps and the remote sensing technologies has enabled the collection and the analysis of data Evaluation of GIS, global positioning system, remote sensing, all in all together, what we can say, we can say the role of GIS technologies have, uh, you know, uh, make it possible to do it in less time cons consumption as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are able to do it uh, in a proper manner. We can go for the 
following uh, things which are becoming very easy to with the help of these GIS and remote sensing technology. The evaluation of GIS, uh, the global positioning system and remote sensing, uh, the technologies has enabled the collection and analysis of field data in various ways and which was uh, uh, like resource management, harvest planning, fire management things, map production, GIS for strategic planning and modeling. So this figure also you can see uh, that vegetation mapping we are able to carry out preliminary studies like whenever we are planning for any kind of things firstly we need to go for the preliminary study where we opt for the study area demarcation then we can go for different data collection strategies then we can go for the vegetation mapping then we can plan for the surveys forest inventories can be done then statistical analysis and then we can go for the socio-economic diagnostics then we can go for management plans and then reduce uh, uh, you know impact or we can plan for the lastly we can uh, plan for the management strategies and how these strategies can be applied on the field also then uh, it is supposed by the intensive use of GI technologies, remote sensing for its capability to collect the, uh, you know, information. So these technologies are also very helpful for uh, collecting the various information. Okay, uh, like remote sensing for its capability to collect accurate information over extensive areas at a repetitive basis. Okay, so with the help of remote sensing, we can get a time series data sets and we can go for the analysis where we can uh, go for a repetitive uh, basis. Like we can uh, have an imagery of every year of the same point and we can go for the extensive study related to the, you know, expansion or spreading of a particular thing in a particular area. So then GIS um also uh, helps for different kinds of spatial statistical and mapping related analysis if you see uh, the collaboration of the gis and remote sensing where we are uh, you know uh, concerned about the spatial and non-spatial data sets where we are talking about the you know geographic um, mapping of the things and uh, we are also integrating the non-spatial information of the same uh, we are also uh, scanning the various maps we are uh, collecting the uh, data sets from the different um, organizations who deals with these forests and then we go for the planning of the data sets and then we on the uh, spatial side we go for the digitizing of the maps then we also integrate these spatial and non-spatial data sets and we can go for the area calculation okay in the on the other hand when we are talking about the remote sensing tasks we go for the data acquisition in terms of the different imageries we uh, rectify them with reference to the base maps of those areas we mosaic them we clip our area based on uh, uh, the district of uh, state which we are concentrating and then we go for the area calculation again and then we go for the comparison analysis results and suggestions or, or for, for a particular uh, things what do you call for the different management related strategies now the use of gis in forest management if you see the gis is a good tool for forest management because it answers the following questions that help in forest management activities like what is the location of a particular forest whether it is in an increasing way whether it is in a decreasing way if we know that these are the areas where the forest is degrading so we can focus on these areas so these location we are able to know with the help of these geospatial techniques so location of forest resources okay in the earth 
in many ways such as place name post code or gi reference such as latitudinal longitudinal position can be known you see here if i want to know which forest area this is where are the highest forests so these kind of you know information i can get with the help of the gis tool then the second what is the condition where is it for example i am talking about that in these area in the northern area there is a degradation of forest in eastern area more degradation so uh, so uh, this gis technique they actually helps us where it is the condition where it is more critical where is less critical where it is moderately critical so wherever it is more critical we need to focus uh, with a fraction of time or we need to focus on a prior manner so non forested land of a certain size distance from the road or river that can be calculated he this this point is you know 10 kilometers away from this river or this uh, road so where it is that location can be easily found with reference to other features of interest okay then the trend what has changed since once that that's what we are saying that what is a temporal change okay what has changed since what so we can also go for a calculation that since 1995 in jagatpura where you are staying the forest area is continuously uh, converting into some other land form okay so how we can go for this kind of trend analysis on the basis of the temporal changes so if we have a temporal uh, uh, data sets images of the same point we can go for the analysis that since when the this kind of change is uh, taking place in a particular forested area okay then we can also analyze the pattern what special pattern is existing that means determine whether uh, uh, urbanization is taking place and that's why this uh, you know pattern is of forest is changing or maybe some um, other uh, pest infection is uh, taking place and that's why this so we can determine what is the reason of changing a particular pattern or uh, a particular uh, uh, you know or existing pattern what is the reason then the modeling what if we can go for a different kinds of modeling where we can determine ki what happens if a road network is crossing inside the forest it may be dangerous for the habitats who are residing inside this forest okay so this kind of analysis we can also do with the help of gis so what all analysis we can location based condition based trend based pattern based and finally we can also go for the modeling that what happen if that is we are also able to do the future predictions that if a road will cross inside this area or if we put a particular thing in a forested area then what can be uh, its after effects so all these things we can uh, uh, you know uh, use of gis we can say ki this is the use of gis uh, in different kinds of forest management activities now gis the use of gis has flooded almost every field of engineering natural sciences social sciences offering accurate efficient repro reproducible methods for collecting viewing analyzing the spatial data gis and related technologies they provide a uh, foresters with the powerful tool okay if you talk about any field you talk about engineering you talk about uh, natural sciences you talk about social sciences you talk about uh, you know offering uh, accurate and efficient information for collecting the data sets for viewing purposes 
uh, for analyzing different kinds of spatial data sets, GIS has proved to be a very powerful tool because GIS and its related technologies provide a powerful tool which can record the data set, which can keep the data set in proper manner, which can, which, which can analyze and which, which can help various decision making uh, you know, methods. So GIS is a powerful tool for the foresters as well for keeping the data sets in a proper manner, for analyzing, for anyone. Here we are talking about the forest you know, mapping or forestry applications in GIS. So that's why we are only focusing about the forest. But other than forest, also, if you talk about engineering, if you are talk about the, the, the dam site um, locations, if you talk about water resource mapping, if you talk, uh, talk about, you know, natural resource mapping. So anything you talk about, because GIS it produced or it helps us in, you know, collecting, viewing, analyzing, uh, proper record, okay, uh, analyzing, proper data sets so this way it is very helpful tool so gis can be established to provide a crucial information about the resources and can make planning and management of resources easier for example recording updating of resource inventories harvest estimations planning ecosystem management and landscape and habitat planning also so if you talk about the forest resource uh, uh, you know how they are being benefited with the or uh, forest planners how they are being benefited with the you know different geospatial technology as as this information uh, system you know is helps about various resources and can make a planning and management in a, a, a easier manner for example the recording the data which we record and update for example we have information about 1990 or 2001 or 2000 there is a slight change in few areas rest are same so with the fraction of time we can update the resource inventories and same will be reflecting in your maps so this is very easy with the help of remote sensing technologies so so the planners with these updated inventories they can estimate for different things which can be helpful in their planning and management strategies they can plan for the harvest estimation they can plan for the ecosystem management they can plan for different landscape and habitat plannings also okay so basic functions of as we are since from the beginning we are discussing that the basic functions of gis since it is data acquisition and pre-processing database management and retrieval spatial measurements and analysis and the graphic output and visualization so so these things are also directly being involved in the forest management planning which is uh, very helpful for making predictions about the future also okay so based on these prediction we will or we can look uh, the relative uh, alternative for the management activities for example if through any kind of simulation we are uh, you know getting an information that which are the areas which are very highly prone to the forest fires okay so if we have that kind of uh, uh, informations with us so prior in those high uh, uh, prone areas we can go for different kinds of management strategies where we can educate the you know villagers that you have to be very careful where we can uh, give some instructions to the tourists that while you are uh, you know visiting these uh, forested areas during summers you have to be careful so, okay so how we can plan for those activities if we have the predictions with us that these are the areas which are 
prone to fire activities so we can make the alternative arrangements for the management so this ability is crucial to nearly all aspects of management okay forecast uh, management uh, forecasting particularly in long term wood and wildlife supply also gis stores both the geographic and numeric structure of the forest stands and links the spatial database to plan the models it also allow the managers to effectively add both the important temporal and spatial dimensions of the management planning process with the limits of inventory the and model the managers can then map what the forest will look like in 5 years or 10 years or 100 years in future okay as i told you in the earlier uh, uh, talk us as that we can go for the future simulation plannings that if this is uh, the like we are having each and every in, uh, uh, inventory about the forest so based on those inventories we can plan or we can uh, uh, look like ki how a particular forest area will be looking like in the future time to come if there are some problems that can be rectified and some preventive measures can be taken into consideration so this is how the gis is you know uh, app, uh, can be applied in different kinds of forest management related activities okay clear then uh, if you see through this di di diagram we can uh, you know step wise analyze ki how gis can be useful gis uses various data sources and various data map formats okay so what are those these are the when we are talking about these datas they are maps images data digital data products gps related data sets text related data set and other tabular data sets we create a database which is having all these information about maps images etc then we come up with the reports and then we come up with the maps also and finally based on these reports and maps we can go for different kinds of management strategies which we have tried to discuss here also our remote sensing this we have also studied in the previous lecture also that remote sensing is uh, you know getting information about a particular object without getting into a, a, a direct contact of that object or physical contact of that object so this is these all processes we have also studied in the previous records then we have different satellites okay space based earth observation technology is applicable to forest inventory and monitoring fairly um, well known as landsat data set we are using thematic mappers spot panchromatic different uh, uh, satellite images we are no we are using we are using the list data sets different species of irs we are also uh, taking into consideration the cartoon set data sets okay so these are different kind of data sets other than the different topographical data we are also taking into consideration so the beginning of the space based remote sensing data is long back in 1891 with german developer of rocker rocket uh, propel camera okay so this is a brief history that how these remote sensing data came from and uh, different countries they have put uh, their uh, own earth uh, resource technology systems okay for uh, for you know different kinds of analysis so different uh, series of data sets they came into existence now the forest the scope of uh, you know uh, these data sets in the forestry is the satellite based forest uh, the resource mapping and their updation you can see here this is a, a different uh, uh, satellite images which take we take into consideration for different kinds of mapping and management then for the change detection we can also go for forest resource inventories we can also gis database development then benefits of these 
uh, you know, remote sensing and GIS techniques are availability of baseline information. We can planning for afforestation space strategies, futuristic resource planning. We can also go for sustainability of environment. And other than that, we can also plan for the wildlife conservation and development reaction purpose. Then we can also go for the forest monitoring. Other than the mapping, we can also go for the forest monitoring, where uh, we can go for the pest and pollution uh, infection, uh, uh, where we can use different kinds of satellite images, okay, um, uh, to monitor uh, and uh, comparing the results of near infrared and short wave infrared, uh, differentiate the, the spectral regions of these, and we can go for the canopy change, uh, canopy biomass, structure, loss of foliage, change in the canopy moisture, higher uh, the higher ratio, the higher damage, and uh, occur. And based on those damage assessment, we can go for the different kinds of management or treatment in those areas. Then sustainability and productivity assessment, another factor which includes efforts to identify the biophysical and climatic factors suitable for the regeneration of the tree species. Okay, so we can go for different kinds of climatic data analysis and we can, uh, based on those climate uh, data analysis, we can go for the different uh, uh, you know areas demarcation that where due to different kinds of uh, influence of these uh, biophysical and climatic parameters we can go for the uh, you know productivity related uh, activities into the forest areas deforestation there are many uncertainties about the rates of deforestation hence we need to have an accurate idea about the uh, you know uh, about the up-to-date monitoring schemes and uh, comparing the imageries of different periods so that we can have a proper record of deforestation and wherever the deforestation is high those areas can be maintained okay then the GIS and remote sensing uh, uh, technology they are very important in forest cover map mapping as we have already discussed that the multi-layered site representation can be possible using the hydrology and the information of roads and infrastructure uh, uh, in, in this uh, in interpreted data of large using. So we can go for the emergency and fire mapping okay if we have a data which is having where are the uh, you know different uh, drainage systems are there where are different roads are there okay what kind of you know fires are directly affected on different plants vegetations animals uh, stream flow air and the soil quality and climate the loss of life and property also caused by the timber so forest fire is also responsible for this uh, destructions so gis is very helpful in forest fire modeling and timely and efficiency of gis for management of these fire because if we are having a uh, simulation modeling in case of fire, fires also we can have an idea that how this is spreading in what direction this is spreading and how we can go for different management strategies gis also plays an info uh, useful tool for the management of forests because the rainforest are depleting in enormous rate and it is due to the increasing rate of urbanization and agriculture that human activities of encroachment into the forest areas are more okay so what they are doing they are uh, uh, you know converting this forest land into the um, areas for their agriculture urbanization different setup of uh, you know various uh, hotel industries into those forested areas which we are seeing uh, is very common due to which the normal forests they are being uh, you know disturbed and the, if the forest is disturbed ultimately the the 
complete uh, habitat which is residing inside those forested area they are also getting disturbed so we need to have a check on those things so how we can do we can go for a synoptic kind of things which i'm again and again telling you and then we can go for different models also where we can have an idea about the uh, uh, these activities like urbanization and agriculture and all other kind of encroachment into those, those forest areas which we can manage then uh, the gis is also very helpful in graphs maps gis statistical modeling functionalities which also um, you know plays an important role for the help of the various uh, forest managers and forest officials then the digital elevation data okay of the forest cover also uh, becoming very useful for any kind of terrain analysis um uh, uh, terrain analysis on which the movement of soil nutrients influence as well as the uh, uh, outcome of the wildlife productivity forest land distribution is also dependent on any kind of you know topography so with the help of these data set we can plan for those kind of things also then uh, there are some future prospects also uh, of these uh, uh, gis and remote sensing techniques into forest areas they are the need of higher spatial spectral and radiometric resolutions for forest uh, types and species as i told you uh, in the previous lectures also there are uh, uh, different kinds of hyperspectral data which are being used for the different kinds of species characterization then the uh, pest infection control etc so the need of high spatial spectral and radiometric resolutions for forest type and species level characterization even with the help of lidar and those kind of data sets we are also able to get even height of a single tree okay which is further helpful in uh, you know uh, uh, getting the in, uh, information about the uh, succession of the trees that what kind of what is the age of the trees in a particular forest so gradually the mapping and monitoring scenario is expected to be a lot better than before initially only mapping or the extent or the spread of the forest that can be achieved but with the help of spatial spectral and radiometric resolutions which are becoming day by day higher and uh, they are helpful in even a tree level characterization whether it is succession age is concerned whether it is type is concerned height is concerned all these kind of things we can do uh, then sensing using continuous spectra uh, to help not only the better species identification but also in association formulation forest vegetation type level mapping also the high accuracy in the timber volume and biomass estimation by highlighting the differences in the physiognomy of the vegetation so hyper spectral images is providing insight into the state of biodiversity and the vegetation continuum across ecosystem and landscapes unprecedented manner so these hyper spectral images they are becoming very use, uh, useful nowadays for getting any kind of biodiversity or vegetation related activities um, in a better manner so ground penetration of radars are already helping in scientific communities for uh, you know biomass estimation so what we can say what we can conclude we can conclude by saying this that those high spatial spectral and radiometric resolutions they are becoming very useful tool for uh, you know if we want to go for species level characterization species level identification species level pest infection etc okay if we want to go for the uh, uh, you know succession age of the different uh, uh, tree stands so that kind of studies uh, nowadays is uh, becoming very uh, easier with the use of these data sets okay so this is all about for today's lecture and then uh, if you have any queries you can 
uh, ask me on my mail also and now you all can uh, appear for your uh, quiz through your lms and uh, then we will be uh, meeting in the next lecture soon thank you very much